Carrie Kirkham with KNL Wine Merchants, and right now we're at our San Francisco store, and we're with Clyde Beffa Jr., the co-founder of KNL Wine Merchants, which was founded in 1976. And right now we're going to have a Bordeaux tasting, which one of the great things about our three locations is that there are a lot of tastings that you can come to on the weekends. Uh, check out on our website. There's a tab that says local events and you can see what we're tasting and it's a great opportunity to learn about wines and if you ever get a chance to taste with Clyde, never miss that opportunity because you stand a chance to learn a lot. He's been in the business a long time. So um, let's... Yeah, yeah. Well, like Woody Allen says, if you stick around long enough, people think you know what you're talking about. That might not necessarily be true, but anyway. <laughs> wine business is fun. It's much more fun than my previous business of milking cows in a dairy. Um, and uh, we're doing a, a tasting here of what I consider the best vintages of the last 15 years from Bordeaux. Uh, we've got some samples here. And then a couple older bottles over on the side uh, that people guess and if they get it close, they get a bottle of wine. But, um, you know, I love Bordeaux. Uh, to the point where 95% of my cellar is Bordeaux, you know, um, so I don't have too much. I, I like California wines a lot. I drink a lot of Burgundy. I love Burgundies. I can't afford them too much, but, uh, uh, and, and Bordeaux's getting expensive too, but I think some of these are really good values, um, especially the wines from um, Domaine de Chev, Leoville, La Bagors, kind of all, kind of my, five of these are my favorite chateaus, okay, uh, that I collect quite a bit of. Uh, and then we have a tro Trolong Mondo here, which actually is showing 16% alcohol on the label, the 2010. But I, I can't pick up the temp, I can't, it doesn't taste like 16%, okay. Uh, but they were honest, and, uh, and um, usually somebody would put 15.5 on that um, label, but 16, but it's delicious wine. It's, it's like 100 points from Parker. Um, Ooh, this will be fun. Stand, yeah, stand by for this this one. It'll be very interesting to discuss with that level of alcohol. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, in right bank versus you know, the made up and the left bank and all that. So, are we going to taste here? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Are you going to pour some for yourself? Yes. The main de Chev. I love this property. Um, it's um, in the south, in the Pesac Legonon area, Graves. Area, so it's not up in the Maydock where Poyac, and Julian are, and we're tasting wines from a, a several different uh, regions. But Domaine de Chev is one of the best value wines, and they make a great white wine too. Um, 2016 was, a, to me, one of the best vintages, like the third best vintage since 09. 09, 10 being the first two the top ones, and then 16. Um, the wine is very earthy in the nose, a um, uh, little gravelly, um, and it actually is uh, quite a bit of Merlot in here, 35%. Um, oh God, you're good. One thing I love about this, a back label like this is it gives you the breakdown. So you called it 35% Merlot, 55% Cab, 5% Cab Franc, 5% Petit Verdot. You don't find that on too many labels in Bordeaux, mainly because they make up a lot of labels, and it changes every year. The, the, vin, the vintage changes on the percentages, but this one's specific for this this wine. If you would go to ask Anthony Barton about his wine from St. Julian, Leoville, and Langoa, uh, his big comment was, well, this year they were 100% grapes. So, uh, so it's not, and he doesn't believe in the percentages and stuff like that. And and it, they would have to change the back label every time because every year it's a different percentage. But, but they had it on that label. The wine is wonderful. 15 Vintage is, is famous for down in that area. But this wine is just making value wines. Um, I mean, this wine is under $100, which is a value now in Bordeaux to find a great wine that's gonna age for a long time. Um, they make, like I said, a very expensive white wine. It's very good. This 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 property is probably m the most susceptible to frost in all of uh, the Maydoc. Uh, and in 1985, it lost all its Merlot vines. They died. 
it was so cold. Um, uh, it's surrounded by a forest. And then, so in 19, after 1985, it was all Cabernet for about five or six years before they could get some more Merlot coming. But, but now it's got 35% Merlot, and Merlot is, does really well down there. So, I mean, it's still young, and I'll get a, a glass here. Um, but it has that sweetness too in, in the in the middle, the palate. Beautiful finish. A few more years. Hmm. I love the minerality in that. Mm -hmm. Grand Puy Lacoste, a property that uh, is Poyac. It's from Poyac, which is kind of a famous. When people talk about Poyac, why do they say it's the most famous? Because that's where Chateau Latour is, Chateau Lafitte, and Chateau Mouton. Three first growths. Grand Puy Lacoste is quite close to them. Um, it's definitely a classified growth. Um, it's not a second growth, but um, makes really good wines. The, the Bory family owns this property back then. Um, Xavier Bory, his brother Bruno Bory is, um, owns Ducru. And um, Xavier just used to own uh, Old Bataille, but just sold it to Lynchbosch people. But, so Grand Poy Lacoste, Poyac and 16. I'm having three 16s right here because I think there's a great, great vintages. And Poyac and 16, some of the best wines come from Poyac and Saint Estep. It's a, it's a North Madoc vintage, uh, great Cabernet vintage. That's a gorgeous nose yeah, on that. It's got wow, some, it's very got, pretty. It, it's got some red, red fruits. It's got some iron and a little cocoa in there. You know, a little bit of cocoa. Oh, that's beautiful. But like 16, on the, on the palate, it's pretty strong. Blackberry cocoa, and I do get that iron in the finish. Yeah, right in the finish. Right? Like our water at home, a little bit of iron in it. But the next wine that we have is, of course, everybody knows one of my favorites, Anthony Barton, Leoville Barton. 16. The three famous Leovilles are... Um, Poiffere, Barton, and Lascasse. Barton, the second growth. Um, St. Julian, a great area just south of, of Poyac. So the wines tend to be good when it's a north vintage and good when it's a southern vintage because they're close to Mario too. But um, this wine scored um, number one for Wine Spectator, top wine of the year. And we sold a lot of this wine right after it got, after it gets number one, you know, we usually sell quite a bit of the wine. And um, now it's selling for about $169. It's big wine, big wine. This one has, to me, a little bit of graphite in it too, a little graphite, of, which, and oh, it's a, little bit of, a, a little bit of cola in the back and some cassis. And where does the graphite come from? Because I noticed that's a common note in Bordeaux. That in Lynchbodge does a lot. I'm not sure. I'm, I didn't do well in my soils engineering classes in, mm -hmm. at Davis. <laughs> oh. But um, yeah, I was wondering if it's varietal or um, yeah, or it could soil. be. This wine is probably 90% Cabernet, even though Anthony Barton says it's 100% grapes. Um, but um, the, the wine is lovely, but it's still, 16s need time. I mean, these wines need 20, 30 years um, to really come around for a great finish like this. And I don't have 20 or 30 more years, you do, but... No, <laughs> no, I keep thinking that. Um, and that's the thing, how, how do you decide when to drink these? How do you know? Yeah, well, who, who you're going to have and where you're going to do it, and then make sure you decant it, especially when they're young like this. I mean, Burgundy, they don't like to decant. I disagree with that. I think decanting, not just necessarily for the sediment, uh, just for the air. Um, and it's interesting, we just got back from Paris, and, and the great wine shops in, in France, they always decant the great white wines, but rarely the red wines, you know? Just to give white wine air, okay? But we're only doing it for air. Not because the sediment's not going to bother you on this wine, um, but just to, you know, make it more evolved. It's so many wines that are drunk too young. You know, you go to a restaurant wine list and they have 19 uh, or the 2020 
Montalena's in. I love Montalena. You know, I, or, I love their, their wines. But 2020s may be a little bit too young to drink with your nice rack of lamb. But, but you can't, they can't afford to have extensive wine lists with older wines. So, um, so if you bring a bottle, make sure you taste it before you bring it. You don't want to bring a corked bottle because then you're going to be stuck and then you're going to have to buy something over the list. So taste the wine, coravan it or whatever you want. open it ahead of time before you take it to a good restaurant. See, this is why you don't want to miss tastings with Clyde. You get these really awesome gems of knowledge, stuff like that. We're going to skip way down now to uh, oh. an old one. We're going to go there, uh, not old, Labagors, uh, which is one of k &L's favorite properties. Um, it's in Margot, so the wines in Margot tend to be a little bit more elegant. Laba Gorse is right next to Chateau Margot. A real good golfer could probably hit his drive from the, the, the center of Laba Gorse to Margot. Okay. Um, and the wines are not very well known, but uh, in the last few years they've been taken over by this oil uh, company owner and they put a lot of money into the properties. Um, it's kind of old school Bordeaux. We drank um, last week at the, at the party, k &L party in um, Redwood City. I brought a, a, a 2001 uh, Lava Gorse in the double magnum. It's a wonderful wine. Um, but these are old school Bordeaux wines, okay? These are not fancy, lots of new oak and everything like that. Um, 05 is a big, powerful vintage. Um, but the nose on the, on the Slava Gorse 05, I think, is just wonderful. And the wine is like $69, so it's you know, 17 years old, 18 years old. Um, I just love this nose of Margot, and you have some like lavender. And, Good lavender, enough to drink. But lavender cassis, beautiful. Yeah, but it's still got that power. The 05 still has that little power in the back, a little bit of tannic back. Um, this wine, after decanting though, should be fantastic with maybe a pork roast or something like that. Um, but good value. Mm, mm. Then I'm going to go to 05, 09, my favorite vintage. And, and I'm, uh, it's a controversial because the favorite vintages of most uh, wine people in the last 20 years are 9 and 10. Invariably, the younger people, like my son or uh, Alex Pross, or, would like the o O10 wine. They call it O10. It's 10, but they, it's O10, okay? Um, and I like O9, Ralph and I, because the older people like the, the O9s are sexier, they're very voluptuous, they're ripe. They're like um, 1929, 1953, when people said, well, those wines, like 82, um, those wines are too sweet. They're, you know, they're never going to age. You know what? This wine will keep going and going and going. It tastes good now. It's going to taste good for a long time. It's one thing about, it's one thing about if you taste a wine and you don't think it tastes very good now, not because it's just too young, but it just doesn't... It, if a wine doesn't taste good when it's young, it's not going to taste good when it's old, okay? So start out with something that tastes good when it's young, and you've got a good chance it'll taste good when it's old, too. So, but uh, uh, I think this nose is wonderful on this wine. This has got that cola, thing, like Langoa. This is a picture. The, the Langoa wine has that label, but that's Langoa. Even though it's on the Leoville Barton label, the Leoville Barton ch Chateau is kind of like a house. Lango is the main. I get cola, but I also get like walking into a humidor. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. A little cigar. Mm. What a sweetness. And, and, the, and the, the mid palate, you have that round sweetness of 09. You know, it doesn't have that harsh tannin, but underneath there's lots of tannin in this one. Uh, it's just the fruit covers the tannins. Okay. Uh, I like the, at my age, I want the fruit to cover the tannins. I don't want the tannins to cover the fruit. And isn't that interesting how your palate ages and your preference change over time? Amazing because I mean, I was all I was a left bank guy. In fact, all the people that have worked here for years, Ralph, and Brian, and Sean, and, mm. you know, they've worked here for 20, 30 years. So, um, I, you never had right bank. The only thing you ever carried right bank was Cheval Blanc, you know. 
and I go, I think I drink a lot of right bank wine now, so because they're easier to drink, uh, soft, fruity, uh, and they can mature a little bit earlier. This wine can go for a long time. Trolong Mondo. It's a beautiful property. I remember when they were years ago when they were putting in their first swimming pool. I think it was in 1988 or say 87 we were there and Christine Vallette, who was related to John Paul Vallette, who owned Pavi. Pavi is just right below Trollong. Trollong is on the top of the hill next to the water tower looking at, at St. Emilia. So prime, prime area. Just been rebought uh, by a consortium and they're redoing this, the, the property. They put a lot of money in. It's a great restaurant. Unfortunately, when we went there two years ago, it wasn't open because we didn't get there. We got there too late. But um, anyway, and they have rooms. So go to Trollo Mondo for the food and also the wine. And um, they're doing a great job. This is 2010. Now, this is the controversial nine versus 10. But this is right bank 10, so it's sweet, okay? Most of the right bank, uh, the left bank tens are a little bit more tannic and sturdy. This wine is pretty good right now. Uh, it's quite lush. Do you think the high alcohol affects ageability at all? It's very interesting because we don't know that, huh? because the high alcohol wines came through in the 70s, late 70s, when it was kind of fashionable to drink California's late harvest sins and stuff like that. And um, uh, or bigger wines, and then the garage wines of the 90s. I don't know how they're going to do because uh, let's face it, the, the wines from 28, 29, which I consider and 45, three, the three greatest vintages of the 20th century, don't have that high alcohol. They have 13 at max, 12 and a half. They didn't have any new barrels. They just made wine, you know. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Bordeaux and how how these high alcohol wines. This one doesn't show the alcohol. Not at all. No. I don't get any ethanol burn or any. It, no. It's it's balanced. It's so sweet and it's ten vintage. The wine is lovely wine. It's not cheap. You know, two hundred dollars. And I think Parker Parker said it was um, and Robert Parker to me was the best wine critic ever. He retired after this vintage. Oh. Ten from Bordeaux. Um, I love the violets. I'm getting a lot of when I get vi that violet note. Oh. Mm -hmm. About ninety percent Merlot. Um, and uh, Trollong, watch Trollong Mondo. The wines are nineteen twenty. They're reasonably priced at less than about a hundred dollars a bottle. Their wine, their their first growth quality. Okay, top of the line. Mm. Don't forget them. They're doing a great job. <clears throat> and if you want to taste something old. Of course. Here, I just brought this from home. 83, Mayonnaise. We served this wine at, uh, we just got this in stock. Uh, we served this wine at the party in Redwood City the other night with the love of the voice over. Magnum. Mayonnaise. Great property. It's kind of the Rodney Dangerfield of San Estep because it's not, it's not Calon Sigur, it's not Montrose, it's not Cosès Grenelle, it's not even Lafon Rocher or Felon Sigur. But Mayne just sits out there by itself looking at the estuary, right near Montrose. Um, so it's got perfect, perfect terroir, great area. Um, this is, you know, what's this, 40 years old now, yeah, 40? Yeah. The wine is not bad. I, mean, I just got in all these old big bottles of Mayonnaise, uh, 94, 97. I've, we're a master of the old and not so famous vintages because the wines really taste good and they're affordable. Uh, so th I thought this 83 was doing really well. So I brought one from home today just to have everybody taste it. D definitely different than the others, as oh. far as that wild nose. Yeah. Mm. It's, a, it's a little bit short and finished, but it, it just got open. Those, those bottles have been open a little bit earlier, uh, so I would say this wine, after about another hour opening or decanting, 
I, I would love to have this wine with a, a nice piece of uh, like a, a rack of lamb or something like that. You know? I'm getting hungry. Yeah, yeah, lamb or something with mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. It has Definitely a little bit. It has that little bit of mushroom. Venison. Yeah. Venison. Oh, venison. Venison medallion. Lovely. So. All right. That's Thank it. you so much, Clyde. Mm -hmm. This was awesome. So, um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe, and check out the KNL uh, Wines website, which I'll put uh, a link at the bottom. And thank you so much, Clyde, and happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Cheers. Dick.